Hi, this will be a short video on closures. Um, the last video covered um, protocols and delegates. And I'm going to use the same example to illustrate an idea because the protocol and delegate pattern has similarities to closures. And as a programmer, you kind of have a choice. You could use one or the other. Um, Swift, like in the older Objective-C, um, delegate protocol patterns seem to be the most common. And now with Swift, Swift seems to be leaning towards using closures more often. Um, you know, it's still it's up to you and it depends on what you're doing and different situations might, might you know, suggest one pattern over the other. Um, I'll leave it up for you to decide after we take a look at, at, at closures, right? So looking at the ex example here, I've got a dog class and my dog has a delegate who is a dog owner. Right? So the dog owner just has to follow the protocol, and then um, the dog can call a method on the dog owner. Right, And essentially, the, the, the dog calls the feed pet method through the delegate. Now, feed pet can be implemented by the owner in any number of ways. It doesn't have to actually feed the pet. It could do anything we want as long as it follows this description. So as long as feed pet looks like this, it, the name is feed pet, it takes no parameters and returns nothing, then, you know, any dog owner can define this in any way it's in any way they like. So this is, um, it's kind of flexible, right? Um, the, the one requirement is that the function looks like this, okay? Let's try another, another system. Let's imagine we wanted to teach our dog a trick, and you could teach every dog one trick, Okay, and what we'll do essentially here is we'll use um, the cl a closure for the trick. So essentially, a closure is a function that we can give to s to an object, and the object can store it in a variable, and it can execute that function on its own, right? So uh, so what we'll do is this, right? Let's imagine that we've got class dog, and what we're going to do is we're going to say trick, right? And this will be a variable that holds the closure. Um, when we define the closure, we need to define it um, in a way that describes the function that it will execute, okay? So essentially, you put the parentheses here like this, and this says what parameters the trick will take. So when, when dog is going to execute the trick, if it has to supply any parameters, we have to describe them here. So for example, if there was a parameter A and a parameter B, and you know A was a string and B was an int, then, you know, we might write it like this, right? Okay. Um, our, our closure, just to start with here, won't take any parameters, so we'll leave that empty, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the little arrow here to say what our um, function or trick function will return. So remember, we're defining a function, and functions can take parameters and also return values. So we'll take no values as parameters, and then we can decide what we return. So if we decide we return a string, you know, we can put a string there like that, right? Um, why don't we make this function actually return nothing, right? How about this, right? So it'll take no parameters and return nothing. So that's, you know, that that's what the function looks like. It's just like saying, you know, dog owner protocol describes this protocol type up here or name is a string and string is the keyword for string. This is the description of a function that takes zero parameters and returns nothing, okay? What I'd like to do though is I'd like to make, since we'll have an error because we need to, um, we need to give trick a value when we initialize dog, like it'll give me this error here, um, you know, uh, return from initializer without initializing all stored properties, and this is the one that doesn't like. We'll make this an optional. So I'm actually going to wrap it in parentheses like this. I think I got to do that. Um, so we'll do it like this, and then we'll say, okay, this this function right here is an optional, um, and that'll get rid of that error there. And uh, and now let's try it out, right? So now now remember, I earlier in the last example, I initialized dog down here as Sparky, right? So what we'll do is we'll we'll give Sparky a function that it can execute or a trick, right? So maybe I'll say Sparky um, dot trick, and then you'll notice here it says, okay, you know, Sparky's trick is a function that you know takes no parameters and returns no, nothing, right? So and you can just hit return there and it'll type trick for us, right? 
and then we can say equals. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put the, uh, the function here. And the way that we write this in this form is curly brackets and then another curly bracket. And then we can put our code inside there, okay? Maybe um, Sparky rolls over, so we'll say print uh, about, uh, hmm, let's do this. Let's do um, rolls over. How about that? That's a good trick for our dog, right? Okay. Um, and then how would we execute this? Well, let's, um, let's actually go up here and add to our dog a function to make it do its trick, right? So what we'll do is we'll say function do trick, right? And then what we'll say is, well, we'll, since this is an optional, we'll have to check for it first. So what we'll do is we'll use the if let. We'll say if let trick equal trick, then trick parentheses, right? So essentially, this variable, when we, um, when we put the parentheses here um, at the end of it, right, we're saying execute this function. So if trick contains a function, Putting the parentheses on the end means like execute that function. Without the parentheses, we're just talking about the function as a value that we can pass around, right? Okay, so we'll put these here like that. And then now that we've got that, we can set, um, you know, Sparky's trick to roll over or rolls over. And then what we can do is we can say, you know, uh, Sparky dot do trick. Okay. And then we can see Sparky rolls over. Hey, right? Well, maybe we want to do a little more with this, right? Let's imagine um, Sparky wants to pass his name in, right? So uh, so our function here could maybe take Sparky's name. Now there's a couple ways to do this, but why don't we why don't we just take a parameter here in our in our our um, our closure, right? Just for fun. So what we'll do is we'll go up here and we'll define trick so that it takes a string. Okay, so we'll type in uh, string as our, our parameter there. And then now I have a problem because it's going to say, hey, you know, trick requires a string here, right? So what we'll do is we'll say, um, how about uh, self.name? We can pass that in to our function, right? And uh, now we're going to have another error down here because we defined this closure here without the the string right so how do we add a parameter well what we'll do is we'll put in name right here and then say in so any parameters our our function takes or our closure takes we list here inside the curly bracket and then we follow it with the word in and then our function body begins after after in okay so then i could say you know how about you know, uh, name rolls over, right? So, so Parky, Sparky passes his name into the function, and then now down here it says, you know, Sparky rolls over, okay? So anyway, there's a simple example with a closure, and, you know, I mean, think about this, right? The whole idea here is that we're trying to get two objects to collaborate and work together, okay? So when we define a dog, the dog may need to talk to some other part of our code, and we can do that through the delegate. Or the other, some code from outside can pass a function into, um, into the dog class, and then the dog class can execute that function on its own. And that's kind of another way of maybe accomplishing the same thing, right? Okay, like here with, with the delegate, we're actually calling on the feed pet method outside, which some other class or object can define for itself. Here, we're passing a function in, and then dog is just executing that function and, and returning any parameters that that function recall or calls for, right? Okay, so anyway, hopefully that uh, maybe gives you some ideas or, you know, helps kind of unravel some of this uh, closure stuff for you, okay? Thanks.